So Kelly's asking us how nosebleeds can be caused by toxic mold. And that is a great question. I know it's true. I've seen it with uh, lots of kids and even some adults. And uh, but the mechanism exactly what it is, I don't know if it's um, if it's causing a thinning of the vessels at all. I don't know. But I know that the spores are an irritant, as are the mycotoxin toxins themselves are extremely irritant to the body, like in the gut. This is why uh, digestion and the health of the gut, which affects the immune system, is is hampered so much by mold and mycotoxins because those mycotoxins just tear up in the GI tract. And then you see candida going up because it's yeast trying to form a protective layer, in my opinion. And that's why you always see that high, and which then uh, in the gut, th those irritants of the mycotoxins and mold create more inflammation, which leads to leaky gut, which then leads to more food allergies, um, food sensitivities, autoimmune conditions. But as for in the nose, outside of just the irritant of the mycotoxins and spores themselves, I don't know if there's another mechanism there. That's a good question. I hope I can uh, find someone that does know a little more about that. But I, like I said, I know it's true. We actually have a family friend that um, they were renting in a moldy house, didn't know it was a moldy house, found out, noticed that the, the toilet in the bathroom was, you know, was squishy, the floor. So we knew there's some water damage there. And I don't know if the landlord came or if he sent someone to cut out that subfloor to replace it so that the toilet wasn't rocking, you know. And she was standing at the doorway with her toddler in her arms. And when he cut that up and pulled up that subfloor, uh, the toddler started having a seizure in real time. And then that evening and days after, the boys were having uh, consistent nosebleeds. And they did find out very quickly it was a mold toxic home and were able to get out. But that's how fast nosebleeds were triggered just by that one overwhelming exposure. Now, the mold and mycotoxins were coming in, but at a slower rate. Once he cut that subfloor open and opened it up, it just opened Pandora's box. So spore, spore fragments, mycotoxins just flooded by the literal millions and were breathed in and triggered seizure and nosebleeds in the kids. So unfortunately it does happen as for the exact mechanism outside of the irritation, I don't know. But this is another reason why it, when I hear people are going to DIY remediation, I'm just like, like this could go really wrong. And I've seen it so many times where people do it themselves. They want to save some money or they don't or they don't know who to find, which is usually the biggest thing. They don't know, they can't find someone that knows how to do it properly. And sometimes they undertake it without understanding proper containment, and negative air pressure and proper process for remediation and bad things like this happen because you can have a mold problem, but when people think they're doing something good and they cut it open and remove it and put new drywall in, they literally just unleashed millions and possibly billions of spores, fragments and mycotoxins. So. Anyway, I hope that helps a little bit, Kelly. I know I didn't have a definitive answer on what causes the nosebleeds outside of an irritant, but it is one of those very obvious symptoms that we can sometimes spot uh, from a mile away with kids. All right, bye-bye. Do you have questions about mold in your home or body? Book a consultation with Matt, a.k.a. The Mold Man, to guide your home and body to the next level of healing.